Mr. Smith, uh, I'm interested. What assumption of rate of return do you have to make to make the distributions out of your uh, out of your pension fund? Representative Pierce, our current assumption is 8 percent. Our 25-year return is 8.9 percent. Our 30-year return is in excess. What did you make on the last? What have you made in the last quarter? Um, I don't know. In the last quarter, last quarter about 4 percent. About 4 percent. Um, in the last three years, over how much 10%. short? How much shortage did you? In other words, your assumptions are at 8 percent. Well, let me just. Uh, in our last fiscal me, year, we got a 1.9 compared to our 8 percent. If that's what you're trying to get to. Yeah, so uh, yesterday CalPERS announced that they had 1 percent rate of return. Their assumption is 7.5, uh, and it's looking like maybe they're 800 billion short if they figured it at 3.8. So the calculation for 1 point rate of return is probably in the trillions just for California. Uh, so these pension funds that make these assumptions and then pay out very large retirement bonuses or, or retirements are really putting the long-term future of the, the pension fund at jeopardy. I was interested in your comments, Mr. Spilth, on executive compensation. Does, uh, do you allow your shareholders, your shareholders would be the pension uh, beneficiaries, do you allow them to bid to, uh, to vote on your compensation? Um, our board of directors is directly elected by our membership and our board of do directors. Do you allow them to vote like you're asking what our for corporate? Is. Do you allow them to vote, Mr. Smith, on your compensation the way that you're requesting in your testimony that corporations would allow? I, I, I would challenge whether that's a comparison, sir, but no, they do not vote on my compensation. Okay. What do you make? What do you I make? What's your salary? About $300,000 a year. And they don't get to vote on that. That's, uh, that's very interesting. Uh, Mr. Uh, Ms. Del Rio, do you keep track of uh, people who don't make, they're not able to service the loans? Do you all track that? Yeah, your customers who can't service well, their loans? Of course, sure. You mean people who fall behind on our loan, on their And so list? if someone it defaults on a loan and they come back in for a loan, you have a record of that? Yeah, we try to restructure people when they fall behind so that we don't have to get to the point of... But you, you're not just not knowledgeable if they have defaulted on a loan. Oh, no. And so I find your testimony where you're critical of those who do track and do make available credit histories. You're, you're very... Um, uh, you, you are very uh, criti critical of those who allow credit histories to go about, and yet you all track a credit history. Your, your testimony. Oh, sorry. Uh, gave I think maybe I wasn't clear. Um, so first, in terms of the credit, uh, we we do look at credit history of people, but we also look at many other things. A lot of our borrowers have no people. credit history, and so we look at other Thank you. things. Thanks. But I'm sorry, Mr. my critique and my testimony was not about even lenders using credit history, although there's some questions there. It was about employers and others outside of the credit system using that to judge character and whether someone would make a good employee. And there okay. are some concerns As, um, there. Uh, Mr. Uh, well, if I could follow up, Mr. Sharp. Uh, do you know in the U.S. Chamber how many employers ask about credit history before they hire? Because in New Mexico, we're, people are dying for employees. They're saying, please send us the employees. Pass us. All they have to do is show up for work and pass a drug screen. We need employees badly. And I've never heard one employer in New Mexico ask for a credit history. Anyway, it's, it's just a curiosity. Mr. Men, um, you ever downloaded content off the web? Yeah, of course. Uh, so you, you might have an opinion about net neutrality regulations, those who would regulate uh, those who yeah, are I downloading? I actually don't. I don't think I have enough information. You don't have an opinion about that? Yeah. I don't actually know enough about the issue. It's not sort of my issue. Area, so. Okay. There are people who would like to limit your ability to download uh, information, films, whatever. Okay. Now, I suspect that they don't have one shred of, of uh, empirical evidence. They just understand that they are opposed to... You, uh, opposed to the government coming in and regulating. So when I see that you talk about regulation being highly speculative, it would be highly speculative that people want to say, you can't stop me from downloading content. It's, it's a free society. It's free. Sure. They won't have one shred of empirical evidence. Sure. I, you I would declare so. that to be highly speculative, and I'm finding that to be a deep flaw but, in your testimony. It would yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much.